What's up guys, we're going to be installing Parrot OS as a virtual machine using VirtualBox. The first step is to head to parrotsec.org and we can see immediately that there are several different versions of Parrot OS. We have a security edition, which is what we'll be interested in right now. There's also a home edition for more general use. There is a customized edition of Parrot OS, which is made use of by Hack the Box. Great place to check out if you want to advance your pen testing skills. You also have a cloud edition, an architect edition, which basically means you can choose which packages are going to be installed. And finally, very cool option, we have Raspberry Pi version of Parrot OS. So without further ado, we are simply going to grab the security edition of Parrot OS. So once that's downloaded, we now need to prepare VirtualBox to install the ISO file that we've grabbed. So we're going to start by creating a new virtual machine. We'll call it Parrot OS. And we want to make sure the type and version are correct here. Otherwise, we could run into some issues in the install process. Parrot is obviously Linux, but it's a Debian flavor of Linux. And we want to choose the 64-bit version because that's going to be what the ISO file is. It's designed for 64-bit architecture. So we'll choose next. We need to assign some RAM or memory for use with the virtual machine. Although it is fine to assign a gigabyte or two gigabytes of RAM, some of the operations we might be running can be fairly intensive. I would recommend assigning around about eight gigabytes of RAM if you have it spare. We're actually going to assign roughly 10 gigabytes of RAM for this system. But if you don't have eight available, then four will be fine. You might struggle with less than four. It really depends on what you're going to do with the operating system. But in terms of the minimum spec for Parrot OS, I think it's actually less than a gigabyte of RAM. So feel free to choose what you want here. We're going to go for a fairly beefy 10 gigabytes of RAM with the system. The next step is to create a virtual hard disk. Now you have various options here. You can either create one that dynamically expands or you can create one that's a fixed size. Generally, I used to choose dynamically allocated, so the hard disk would grow the more files we place on it. But I also ran into some difficulty during the install process for some distros using this option. So mostly I just used the fixed sized option. I would recommend a minimum of 40 gigabytes for your space here. It really depends how much space you have. You can probably get by with less. Again, this is going to be a fairly beefy install, and we're going to put roughly 80 gig of space for this virtual hard disk. So let's choose the option to create. You can see I actually get an error there. And it's basically just because I chose the wrong drive. This is not my drive for storing the virtual hard drives. I don't actually have 80 gig of space on the C drive. So let's just navigate to the location where we'd like to store our virtual hard drives. So I actually have a space on S drive. I do have other drives as well, but specifically the S drive here is an SSD. So it may give a small boost in performance to these virtual machines. So I'm going to select that directory as the installation location. This time when I choose create, hopefully everything's going to work fine. This will take a few minutes depending on the size of the drive that you're creating. So we'll just let this process complete and we'll be right back. Okay, so now our virtual hard disk has been created. We just need to tweak some general settings on this Parrot OS virtual machine. So if we open up the settings, we now need to check out the storage section and we want to attach that ISO file. So this is the equivalent of starting up a computer with the USB drive plugged in or perhaps a CD if you're old school and the computer's going to boot from that. So we'll go to this option here, add optical drive. And we then need to navigate to the location of our ISO. If it's not here already, which it probably won't be, you can choose this add option. You can then browse for the appropriate disk image. Once it appears in this list, we'll select the choose option. And now when we boot up our system, it's automatically going to boot from that ISO. Let's see what happens. Let's fire up Parrot OS for the first time. So it does ask us to confirm the start up disk. And I think if you hadn't selected it as an option on the previous screen, you could actually just select it from this window as well. So we'll choose start. It's now booting up from that ISO. We'll choose the try install option. So we will initially get booted into a desktop, but that doesn't mean the operating system is installed just yet. So here's Parrot OS 
Obviously we don't really like this resolution. That's something that we can fix after the install. Okay, so we're now at the desktop. This is Parrot OS. It's obviously 800 by 600 resolution at the moment. If we play around with the view options, I think it is possible to make it full screen and it may even automatically adjust the resolution. You can see there's some glitching on the desktop background at the moment. I think if we play around with this for long enough, it will sort out the desktop background. However, it's really not that important at the moment because the objective is not to use this OS just yet because it's not actually installed at this stage. This does look like it might be in 1920 by 1080p resolution. In fact, we can probably check that if we head to system preferences, hardware displays. Let's take a quick look. So we can see that Parrot OS has recognized that the resolution is 1920 times by 1080. And I'm sure that desktop background would eventually sort itself out if we played with it for long enough. We're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to choose the option to install Parrot. And what we get presented with is the Calamari's installer for Linux. You'll see that many distros use this same installer. So even if you've never used Parrot OS before, this will probably feel somewhat familiar. So we're going to choose our setup options. We want British English. We're going to choose our time zone. So obviously choose your own time zone. Don't copy my time zone unless it's the same keyboard layout. And we are simply going to choose the arrays disk option. So we don't need to worry about manual partitioning. This is really one of the great advantages of making use of a virtual machine is we don't need to worry about this kind of stuff. So we'll choose the arrays disk option. We don't really need to choose anything else here. We can just choose next and we can type in our details. So what name do you want to log in as? We'll choose Zen Shell for this. And what the name of this computer, again, you can choose, but I'm going to name mine Parrot. In fact, I'll call it Parrot OS because there's another system called Parrot on the network. We want a password, choose next. This is an overview of what's going to be erased on the virtual hard disk. We don't really care that much because there's nothing on there at the moment. So we're not really erasing anything. Let's choose the install option. And we can see that the installation procedure has been initialized. It's just a case of waiting for it to complete. So let's leave this to run. We'll be back shortly once the installer is complete. All right, so the install process is complete. So going to head into settings, we'll go to storage, and we're just going to make sure our ISOs are removed. This way the system is not going to try and automatically boot from the ISO Everything should be installed on this virtual hard drive, the .vdi file there. So we can safely remove the ISOs. Let's go to OK. Let's start up the system. And if everything's installed correctly, we will just boot in straight to Parrot OS from the hard drive this time rather than from the ISO. So we'll choose the option Parrot. Everything looks good. We have no attached media, but it's recognizing that there is a Parrot OS installed on this system. We get a splash screen, looks good. And when we were installing with the Calamari's installer, we did set a password on the default user, which is Zen Shell. We may be prompted to enter our password shortly. Great, so we're at the splash screen, we can see our name there, we're just going to type in our password. And we can see after we've done that, it's actually automatically recognized that the monitor is a 1920 by 1080 resolution. I didn't touch anything there with VirtualBox. And one of the things I like to do is use the host key for VirtualBox, which is usually the right control key. I'm going to press control and F and that's going to enable full screen mode. So now there's not really any indication that we're running this VM on a Windows host. It almost feels like we are just running Parrot OS natively. However, if we do head to the bottom, we do have a small virtual box options menu there where we can change the view again and tweak some of the other settings. So this is Parrot OS. I would say it is cooler than Kali Linux. I don't really know if there's a metric for measuring coolness, but it definitely appears to be an operating system that is growing in popularity and now appears to be the default choice for many hackers and pen testers. Of course, I still think Black Arch is cooler, but this is really just conjecture. I would guess that Parrot OS is probably easier to use than both Kali Linux and also definitely Arch, which is a little bit of a trickier distro to use. 
One of the things I really like about Parrot OS is the colorful and vibrant desktop backgrounds. Of course, this really shouldn't be a deal breaker for any Linux distro because we can, of course, just download any background we want. But let's just peruse the desktop backgrounds available by default. I would use a whole variety of these different desktop backgrounds. This one's a bit garish. This is the one that's used by Hack the Box. Very cool desktop backgrounds. Again, very cool, colorful Parrot OS background. I definitely like the look of this one. So you can see without the additional effort of downloading files, we have a whole bunch of built-in, really cool looking tech desktop backgrounds that can be loaded up. Okay, so let me pick my favorite, which I think is probably this one. No, let's go with this one. So at its core, Parrot OS is a Debian-based Linux distro. That means if you are familiar with Kali Linux, there's going to be a lot of similarities. Or if you've never used a pen testing distro, but you've used something like Ubuntu, well, that's Debian based as well. So that generally means we're going to be using the apt package manager. So one of the commands I like to use is aptitude. We can see it's not installed yet. This allows us to search the repositories. So I like to start with sudo. Now I use apt get. That's just because my fingers type that automatically, but you don't actually need the get part. You can just say sudo apt install. So I usually type sudo apt get install aptitude. And then we can use that aptitude command to actually search the repositories. So now that that's installed, we can actually use the command aptitude search and we can search for the package we're looking for. For example, imagine we are looking for the OBS package. We can just use aptitude search OBS and see what's in this list. Or perhaps we need something like a VNC server. We can use aptitude search VNC. And let's say we wanted to grab one of these packages. We can then use the command sudo apt install and then the name of the package. So it could be something like VNC viewer, for example. In terms of the desktop environment, it's actually the mate desktop environment. So sometimes this is used with Ubuntu as well. So if you come from an Ubuntu background, you should feel right at home here. Let's just take a quick look. This is the pen testing tools section. And um, we can see a wide range of available tools, including Metasploit, which could be quite useful. But of course, anything that's not there, you can actually install yourself using the package manager. Or if not, if it's not in the repository, you might need to clone a Git repo or something like that. So let's see if Metasploit works out of the box. Let's give it a moment to load up. All right, great. So that's the Metasploit console. I think something like Burp Suite is going to work out of the box as well. In fact, let's just make sure we are fully out of MSF console. And let's just try Bup Suite. Yeah, that fires up fine as well. Now we'll just kill that process. One thing you wanna be aware of also is, and perhaps we should have maybe done this immediately, is it's good to update. We don't know if this ISO contains all of the latest packages. So one of the commands that we want to run is sudo. We're actually root at the moment, so we don't need to do this. In fact, let's just switch user back to Zenshell. So we can use a sudo apt update. So this will make sure our OS is up to date. Sometimes if you find you can't install a package with sudo apt install, you might need to run the sudo apt update command first. And um, you can see this was obviously a pretty good ISO because most things are already up to date. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoy Parrot OS. It's a very cool operating system for hackers and pen testers. Thanks again for watching guys.